stand for a moment of consecration. Father, 
We're talking about a God that don't wear out, rust out, don't give out, and don't give up. We thank you, dear God, for our life, our health, and our strength. Thank you for being God Almighty. Thank you for loving us. Even when we want worse being loved, you loved us. Thank you, dear God, for your joy. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for our bishop. Thank you for our mother. Thank you for how you have them to teach us your way, Lord. Thank you for how you give us what you give them and us, what we need to go back with you. Father God, we're asking you this morning, such our heart. See if our heart belongs to you. Such our thought. See if our thought belongs to you. Such our mind. See you our mind belongs to you. Touch our heart, Lord God. If you find anything in there that it shouldn't be, take it out, Lord. In the name of Jesus, oh God, of no sin go in or in. Oh God, if there's any unforgiveness in any of us, take it out, Lord. In the name of Jesus, no
blessing of us. Yes. My God, I'm looking all over the audience and Facebook Live, I'm sure. Amen. And comfort call, I'm sure you can be in agreement with us that he deserve all of the honor, all of the glory for blessing me. I've got to give him all his glory.
for victory. Thank you for the battles that have already been fought and victories that have already been won. Thank you, God. You fought a good fight on Calvary. You said and stated, no man takes my life. I'll lay it down. I have the power to lay it down. I have the power to get it back. Thank you for being alive and well right now in Jesus' name. Thank God and amen. Somebody give him a big clap.
saw Minister Frazier. He called me on the other evening and told me that he needed me and the preachers to pray that he needed a touch from the Lord. And we made a noise and he is.
Amen. That we can honor you for your faithfulness to God, your faithfulness to one another, your presence in this service, your giving, your tithing, your love token, your love offering. Don't you forget, amen, that you do for the Lord will last. Glory be, hallelujah. That you do for the Lord will last. I thank God for those that tithe in this ministry, giving to the Lord. Glory be to God. Those that give free will offering. And most of all, uh, I am aware that God is blessing our college students. We thank God for taking care of them. There are those that are tired. Amen. They get a little blessing from someone they tired. So isn't that a blessing? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We're not talking about grants and 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 full scholarship. We're talking about what we are done, how we're teaching. It's getting to our young people to tithe, to give to the Lord. And I want to encourage all of the elders in this church, the preachers, the elders, the saints of God that have paid away and have endured. I pray that you will get to this part that you begin to release life into our young people. And I'm not talking about... I'm not talking about our young people at my age, seven and five, six years old, and somebody 40 years old. 50. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about our teenagers, our children. Glory be to God. We've got to begin to tell our teenagers, glory be to God. And those that are young married, we've got to speak life in them. Do you not know the Bible said there's power of life and death in the tongue? We've got to start telling our children, you shall live to be holy. You shall not die, but you shall live to declare the goodness of Stop calling them big head and bald head and be like your old daddy. Declare to them, you're going to be like your father in heaven. You're going to be like the one I'm praising. Tell your daughter you will live holy. You will wait for God to give you a husband. You will serve the Lord. Oh, my God, hallelujah. No matter how they're acting, no matter what they've done, hallelujah, you declare them. You shall not die in your sin. Oh, I wish I had some help right there. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Life in the power of the tongue. Glory be. Stop speaking. Stop blessing your children. Amen. Glory be to God. When they get through playing the boom box or the uh, electronic and they lay down at night, glory be to God. Walk over them and put your hand over them and tell them you shall not die in your sleep. You shall rise and declare the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody type, you shall not die, but you shall live. That's what we need to get into our young people. Glory be to God. That God may continue to bless them and they're going out and coming in. And I thank you so much. I thank you so much. Let nobody, let nobody confuse you about what God says do and don't do. I said, let nobody confuse you to do what God said do and don't do. And I want to encourage these young people, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Honor your mother and father in the Lord. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Honor your parents. Glory be to God. In the Lord. Honor your mother and your father. Honor, respect them. Glory be to God. Never get too old and grown that you don't respect your mother and father. When we get to where we don't respect our mother and father biblically, Ephesians 6 will tell you, your day will be cut short. And that doesn't mean you're going to die because I don't spoke life on you. There's some people incarcerated in prison because their day has been cut short. You don't obey mom and dad. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Your day will not be cut short. So we encourage you to walk in obedience. My God, and parents, walk in a lifestyle over your children. My God, that they'll be gracious enough to call you mother, to call you father. And if they don't do it, know you've lived a life. I sense a, a spirit, someone can say, he's talking about me. You're absolutely right. If that's you, you're absolutely right. Glory be to God. It is a joy and a pleasure being a parent and have the privilege and the honor, no matter what we've done, that we taught our children 
the way of the Lord. And if you have taught them the way of the Lord, they will not depart. My God, aren't you familiar with the story? I can't get my text, but are you not familiar with the story that was told about the prodigal son? Glory be to God. He was taught the way of his father. He was taught love. He was taught that I never will disrespect, never will cast you away. My God, and just because he got in the hall of being, he didn't become a hall. Come on now, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Some of you gonna, some of you and your children gonna get in a situation where they're gonna come to themselves. You just be ready to receive. Oh, I see them on the way. I shared with Sister Morgan, I was talking with the Lord, 
I've learned not to ask God for what I already have. Right. Come on, say amen. amen. Glory be to God. What, 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 what use asking God to bless me with materialistic stuff, and I got nowhere to put it? That's right. And the reason I got so much like that, nowhere to put it, because I'm a tither. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on now. If you tie and give to the Lord, glory be to you. Open up the windows of heaven if he needs to prove it to you. See, you don't have to prove me no more. Oh, come on now, glory be to you. If he needs to prove, and he proved it to me once upon a time, I just didn't see all this tie stuff. I can't tie it. And this was after I was born again. Pentecost, the Holy Ghost, fear. Glory, that's some things you don't understand even when you hear until God ministers to you and you do what needs to be done. And oh my God, way back after 1979 and the 80s, glory be to God, I became a tyrant when I found out I'm giving God what belonged to him. Come on now, I didn't do nothing special. I didn't do nothing to be boast about and brag about. It belonged to the God that I serve. Amen. And it, and it took me a while to understand that, that how can I give God 10% glory be to God, and I can't hardly make it. And he reminded me, I left you with 90%. Glory be to God. It's 10%. 10 cent out of a dollar. If that ain't much, say 10 cent out of a dollar. Glory be to God. And I, I got to that point where I get tired and somebody share it with me, and when you overcome and get converted, you're supposed to read back and string your brother. I was told by someone, well, I can't tie that. that, that too much. I said, how much you make? And they told me how much they made. Amen. I said, still ain't but 10 cents out of a dollar. You, you can't tie it more than anybody else. If you make $2,000 a week, it's still 10 cents out of a dollar. If you make a dollar a week, it's still 10 cents out of a dollar. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We got to get away from that stage where we think somebody doing more than us. All of us just need to do what God says. So, all right, just just for a few moments, I want to talk to us. The Lord has laid this in my spirit for several weeks, and we're going to touch on it today, hopefully, uh, just briefly. From this subject, from John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32, John chapter 8. And and verse thirty one and verse thirty two, and I won't go into the full uh, uh, discussion at this time for time's sake. And I know you're familiar with this teaching because it's been preached year after year after year in many instances. And John eight verse thirty one and thirty two. You will find in there he's dealing with the woman that was caught in adultery. And it goes on to deal with Jesus is the light of the world. And it goes on to talk about the true children of Abraham. And that's kind of where uh, 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 and Jesus warned against unbelief. And I want to pick it up today that the Lord would have me to teach us uh, from John chapter 8. Verse 31, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my words, in my words, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I want to talk briefly. We need the truth. Amen. Say it with me. I'll type it, Facebook family. We need the truth. Now, I am not talking about my truth, your truth, their truth, even the court out truth, or we can lie. The bailer would say, are you willing to tell the truth, nothing but the truth and the whole truth? We lie, and the bail don't know about it. Mm. But God wants to give us the truth, because we need it. And it talks about the truth shall make you free. Many of us are saved. 
I pastor you. I've talked with many people. It's no doubt in my mind they are not saved. Because when you accept Jesus for your personal Savior and repent of your sin and allow yourself to be born again, you're saved. The Bible says that you confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Amen. And believe in thine heart, you shall be saved. So I'm not questioning who's saved or who's filled. Amen. I am saying who have the truth. Glory be to God. Because the truth here in John talking to the familiar things that have taken place again from the woman caught in adultery. Amen. Just because you know the law don't mean you're free. And just because those are caught up by the law people doesn't mean they're doomed. Glory be to God. It's what Jesus said, what Jesus brings truth to you. And and so they wanted to stone her. It's amazing how people want to stone you, condemn you for the very thing they either done or done stop doing. Glory. I want to say that again because it takes a time and a little while to teach the truth that you won't think that I'm throwing out at you and beating you down. I'm talking about Jesus' truth. Amen. 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 That, that, that set me free. Amen. Glory be to God. And I say it's amazing how people want to stone you when you're caught up. And they are, thank you, young man. Wow. And they are doing the same thing you have done that just ain't got caught. Oh, God, hallelujah. Oh, you deserve this. You need to, We need to do this to you. Da, 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 da. But they just haven't got caught. Amen. Oh, we want to stone somebody, even in the ministry realm, a preacher, that get caught up in adultery on a conference that he went to. But then what about those that have been caught up that go with people right in church? We're going to stone them. Stone them. Stone them. Hallelujah. Because you haven't been caught. But God knows. He knows. And he's not the stoner he want to free us. He want us free. Glory be to God. And so here he says, uh, the truth. Tell what you are thinking. When you hear the truth, it'll tell you exactly what you're thinking. Oh, my God. Just because I gave you the subject, we need the truth. It already began to talk to your thinker. It'll tell you what you're thinking about yourself, what you think about me, what you think about other people. Glory be to God. But do you not know we need the truth? So our thoughts and our thinking don't condemn us. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. So the truth tells what you are thinking and what in your heart. Glory be to God. I have had the truth, and the truth is not because I told the truth to you. The truth is when you hear the truth. And hearing the truth is when you receive it. The Bible said it, day and hour you hear my word, harden not your heart. Let the church open their spiritual ears and hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Truth is preached many times, but if you don't receive it, it does you no good. Glory. I'm not talking about my truth. I'm talking about God's truth. If we can believe, and many of you have preached along with the preacher, but they all cast down their stone and went away, and God spoke truth to the woman called an adultery. Go and sin no more. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The same thing should have been for them. Glory. But she heard the truth. Go and sin no more. How I many, if you are honest like me, when you got saved the very first time, Filled with the Holy Ghost, and a gladness come over you, and the Lord spoke to you. You didn't want to sin, period. Amen. Some of you struggling with killing a mosquito. Some of you struggling with stepping on an ant. 
Glory be to God. You didn't want to harm nothing or nobody. Glory. And then you lost truth. Glory be to God. If we hold on to truth, we'll never lie on one another. Oh, my time is running out. I say, if we hold on to truth, it is truth from God that love ye one another. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. It is truth from God to those that have been set free. Speak no ear, no man. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. If we keep our faith in this book, glory be to God. If we keep our faith in this book, we won't lie on Facebook. Some of us are lying on Facebook, lying, putting messages out there about how good God is and you live in a devil's standard. Oh, I ain't getting much out there. Hallelujah. You can't put out there how good God is and how he loves you and you live in a devil's standard. You can't put out there on a scripture that love you one another and you ain't loving one another. Oh, but the truth you shall know, and it'll make you free. I'm not talking about my truth. I'm talking about God's truth. So he wants us free. Glory be to God. And he knows what's in our heart. And sometimes truth will cause in me and you when we are preaching, when we need to bring a message, before we get up to bring that message, the truth will say, you need to repent. Glory to bring truth back to you. What you thought that was wrong. Glory be to God. He'll bring people in your midst. Glory be to God. That you need to say, Lord, forgive me for thinking that way. And that's some sin is between only you and God. People will never know how negativism you is until you start telling it. Glory. And when you start talking about your past, how God forgave you and the attitude you had before you got born again, and they see that now, something is wrong. Glory be to God. Whatever we were yesterday was before the Lord saved us and forgave us. Whatever our sin were, we are born again as new. Glory. And we shouldn't have a desire to do those things again. I talked with someone, my brother, over the years. And they said to me, I'm very dangerous when somebody get on my last nerve. Glory be to God. That's a dangerous stage for a saint to be in. And confess it. Glory be to God. I'm, I am a little bit afraid to even talk with you because I don't know what nerve you're on. <laughs> Hallelujah. My God, on your last nerve, don't get on my last nerve. That's a dangerous state to be in. It, it's such a dangerous state because I can say you're not free. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's a dangerous state to be in when you love world pleasure more than you do the things of God. It's a dangerous state to be in when you can cheer for your favorite team and can't cheer for Jesus. You ain't free yet. It's a dangerous state to be a, a shame in the house of the Lord to worship him, but you ain't ashamed to cut up downtown. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I, I, I just want you on Facebook to, since you ain't here for me to see your face, type, show you right. <laughs> Glory be to God. Sometimes we just need the truth to cause us to repent. Glory be to God. God, Jesus, and his word the one and only who can set us free from the world, worldly pleasure. It's amazing people testify how good God is and can't overcome worldly pleasure. Now, I am not talking about things that you may be questioning about. I'm talking about worldly pleasure that satisfy the flesh. And do nothing to satisfy God and his spirit. Amen. It doesn't please God when he knows I don't pray, I don't study, I'm not in one accord with my wife, we fuss and argue, and then I stand here and want to impress you like I'm deep. God knows better, hallelujah. He knows I'm bound, and he wants to set me free, So the spirit of the Lord fills the house, and Hallelujah. When his presence comes into the house of the Lord or in your presence, my God, when he comes into the presence, God's presence coming in the midst of us, glory, we're supposed to recognize 
of a king. Glory. You just can't act anyway in the presence of a king. Glory be to God. You can't even come into the presence of the king unless you've been invited. I'm talking about natural kings now. Glory be to God. You don't understand that because we live in America. We can talk about and degrade our leaders, but you won't do that in a kingdom where a king is. Come on, say, there is some kingdom on earth that have real kings, but God said, I'm king of that kingdom. Hallelujah. It's amazing that I see people bowing to king, maybe King Buddha, maybe King Muhammad, maybe King Confusion, but when the real God is exalted, nobody bows to him. Hallelujah. But I tell you, this real king of kings, he's alive and well. Hallelujah. So as I close for the day, he want to deliver us. He want to set us free from worldliness. You want to set us free that we can come under sonship mm-hmm. and daughtership mm-hmm. of the house. Yeah. I know I'm not your biological father. Yeah. Amen. And I never told nobody to call me dad and father. I never told nobody in this ministry to call me spiritual father. Yeah. You chose to do that because God has set you free. Yeah. Now, something of somebody done bound you when you can't be submissive yeah. to your father. Yeah. Glory be to God. I want to share this, and I'm closing. My father, my biological father, some of you haven't heard this. Some of you have heard it. Same father, Deacon Larry, keep him in your prayer, and his wife, they're going through some sickness, and she's having some sickness in her body, and we talk and pray, and who better, he thank God for the saints that assist him with his wife, but who better, these are testing time to see if he's free. My God, all these days we said for better for worse, it'll come to tell me that we free. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And God is able to keep him and help him with his wife. But him and Sister Jackson and my other brothers, amen, our biological father, he was a hard worker, a sharecropper, Glory, a farmer. Dug in the dirt. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Worked in the cotton field and worked on somebody's plantation. My God. Lived in somebody's house and had to take a lot of things because he had nowhere to go. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. My father was not a weak man. He was not a pitiful man. He was a good husband. To his wife, he was a good father to us as children. Five days a week, he was a good father. He was at home with us every night. He left home every morning going to work, Monday through Friday. But Friday evening, we saw him no more until Sunday evening. He was a drunk and drank liquor from Friday night until Sunday night. And he'd come home Sunday night. It would be the first one at work Monday morning. But he still was my father. Glory. And I never dishonored him. Hallelujah. Glory. I didn't know nothing about your days would be cut short. All I know, my mother said, this your father. My God. We could not even eat during the Monday through Thursday night. We could not even eat what mama prepared until daddy got home. Because we had to have that time together. On no disrespect, it's not the devil's fault that we don't have family meals together. I mean, the children are eating in one room, the mother eating in one room, and if we go to the restaurant, we're on the cell phone. I'm not, we just haven't had truth. I'm giving you truth. If you get angry with me, it's between you and God. I'm speaking in the Holy Ghost. We still ought to have the respect in us to put that phone down. But they don't do it because we got out. Glory be to God. Are y'all going to keep on tithing? Y'all going to keep on sowing? Glory be to God. I'm giving you truth because the Lord wants you free. Glory be to God. She taught us how to respect our fathers. Glory be to God. And we learned that. And 1978, 
Glory be to God. Seven and seven and seven and eight. Glory be to God. God began to deal with him through my long and jeopardy mother's prayer. Glory be to God. And he didn't play with the church. He didn't go to church. He didn't profess to be saved. He didn't, didn't do anything of that. But in 1977, uh, in the latter part of 78, the Lord saved him. Yes, he, he got a hold of the truth. Yes, Glory. And Mama met him. God will, God will forgive you. All that drinking, God will forgive you. And he received Jesus for his first Savior, born again, and came to church. I'm right here in this ministry, within the little block church. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Don't tell me when you get true. I don't care what your age is, your stage is, how deep you are, how high you are. There will be a change. And that's why God is leading me to speak this unto us and teach us this. Because when you get a hold of God's truth, there's a change. missing when we sang that old hymn, I look at my hands and they look new. Look down at my feet and they, that, that sounds good, but it says no change. You're not free yet. Glory be to God. And so he got saved and gave his life to the Lord and, and overcome the world. No more drinking. No more smoking. No more talking. It was about Jesus. And he went on to be with the Lord in 19, early, latter part of 78. Glory be to God. He never heard me preach. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory. But he hears me now. And worldly lust and sin, misery, unhappy. Glory be to God. When the truth sets you free, you're not happy about things. You're happy with Jesus. And I want to close on this. Uh, I remember I grew up on the farm and so many parables that I can share with you to be true. During those farming days, if a cow or calf had a tendency of breaking out, and when we catch them and bring them back, we put this particular cow in a catch pen. And we kept them in there, we fed them, we watered them. They couldn't go no further but in that circle until they were broken, not to try to break out. And that's what truth would do for us. God will put us in a cocoon, yeah. glory be to God, to make us, yeah. glory to break us, so we won't break out when we get free. Yeah. There's no need to break out of a ministry like this, because you disagree with someone. There's no need to break out of holiness to go back to the world. Amen. There's no need to break out of obedience and go back to disobeying. I know this is not popular preaching, and I don't claim to be a popular pastor. I'm a truth pastor. I preach truth by experience. I preach truth by knowledge. I preach truth by wisdom. And I preach truth concerning watching for your soul. Glory to God. And so, Brother uh, Walter, we had this calf in there. I remember it well because I was responsible for feeding it, watering it. Amen. And it goes around and try every little place to try to break out, and it couldn't break out. Come back and eat and drink water. Same thing for days and days until he come to eat and went back to his spot and laid down. He come to drink water, went back to his spot, because he had mentally discovered, I can't get out. Glory. Glory. Until I'm free. And I freed, I opened the gate. Glory be to God. And the gate was wide open to free him. He still walked around. Glory. Wasn't no 
wear the gate open because he had become accustomed to his clothes. Glory be to God. God want to free somebody today that's been closed and stigmatized as though I can't be blessed. God love everybody but me. He want to open the gate for you today. And then he walked around and walked around and, and I had to literally get in there and steer, push, force him to go through that gate. And when he went through that gate, Carolyn, glory be to God, he still didn't know he was free until he discovered Terrell, glory be to God. And he looked around back at the pen, he looked all around and discovered I'm free. And he went to jumping and running. <laughs> when you get free, ain't nobody got to tell you to get in here. Another day, and I want you to know, thank God for all of the uh, legendary people that have gone before. Thank God for Martin Luther King. Thank God for Bishop Baker. Thank God for all of those, but they didn't free me. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. It brought a change yeah. in society. And I told, I told years ago, a uh, particular restaurant then at that time would not allow. Uh, us to go through the front door. We could get it at the back door. Amen. And order our meal from the back door. And through time freeing us to go through the front door. But look, I had money when I was going to the back door. Come on, I say amen. I wasn't begging. The only reason I didn't go inside the restaurant, you didn't lie me in there. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We went to church. We were minutes were brought up in church, but we weren't free. Lord, we didn't know nothing about church. You couldn't do that in many of our churches back then. Lord, you couldn't clap your hands. Only the deacon in the amen corner could say amen. Y'all ain't with me. Only the mothers on the mother's board could say amen. Glory, but God done freed us now. Everybody can say amen. Everybody can say hallelujah. Everybody ought to have a praise. Everybody ought not to want to be locked up again. My God, the New Testament teaching says, don't be so eager to be yoked again with the yoke of bondage. It's a sad thing. It's a hard preaching to get somebody that went back to bondage. Glory be to God to get them free again. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And if you're free and free indeed, then I'm saying to you in this closing, go. And sin no more. You know what God done told you. You know what He called you to do. You know what He's saving you for. You know what He forgave you for. Glory be to God. And many of us, many of us in this house of prayer, if I would ask you to stand above 20, it probably wouldn't be, but just a few people would not be able to stand. And that's a good reason right there for you to be free, stay free. So we can show them not to get stuck in bondage. If we live the life, some of our children will never taste marijuana. If we live the life from now, glory be to God. Paul said, when I overcome and get converted, I reach back and strengthen my brother. We need to live a life and be free enough that all of our young girls that are growing up now in college, glory, there be some things they won't do. Amen. Glory be to God. I was at a school here in Otago County several, several years ago and wanted me to speak on absentee, glory, abstaining, teaching to our young girls and boys about abstaining from sex. Glory be to God. And I taught them the way of the Lord. And the best way to avoid pregnancy, some uncurable disease, being pregnant, is no sex. I know that's not popular to say that now. 
talking about our young people, when they see older people burning, appear to be on fire. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. But the best way to avoid, we still need to teach our young girls and our young boys no sex before marriage. Yeah. And that's the truth, y'all. Yeah. We want to teach our girls don't get pregnant. But I teach our young boys don't you pregnant her. Yeah. We've been young those days now where we was taught by our modern day parents don't swallow no watermelon seed. Glory be to God. And the boys was taught back then, Brother Walton, in my days, growing up, they keep your zipper up. But we didn't know freedom would allow us to say no sex before marriage. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We're in too great of a time that grandmothers and boo mother, boo mama don't need to be raising children, children. And if we don't teach this truth, it's going to happen to some more. Glory be to God. Uncertain stances that puts us in a situation like it did with me and Sister Morgan. Had to raise our four grandsons. Glory be to God. But we never disrespect their father. Glory be to God. I went down to the uh, food stamp office. Uh, this back in uh, what? Uh, when did Melissa pass away? Hmm? Hmm? 91. And I went down to the food stamp office and applied for food stamp. And they said, oh, you make too much for food stamp. I said, I don't want them for me. I want them for my grandchildren. <laughs> I'm able to take care of me and my wife. I want them for my grandchildren. She said, no, we, we can't do it because you're a gardener's over me. What you make, you have to take care of them. She said, but now, we can tell a little lie. I said, no, I don't want it. <laughs> when you freeze, honey. <laughs> So we encourage you, if you're free, stay free. If you're not free, get free. And sometimes you just have to, like I did, uh, stand up something. Like I did when the devil had a hold of me in sin, wanted to hold me out there, he didn't let me go. Broke a loose. Amen. Some of you got to break a loose from the thing that holding you captive. Glory be to Hallelujah. It's not the devil's fault. It's not the devil. Will you stand with us? Father, we thank you for this service. We pray now that you will bless your people. Free your people, God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hear Father, Son, and Holy Ghost and Facebook Live. Conference call. Free us, God. That we can walk in the marketplace and people will see a difference. In the name of Jesus, we can walk out of our yard in our community. And people are passed by and there's something different about that house. Glory. Some don't pass and be jealous, but some don't pass and be blessed. And we pray that you bring every yoke, loose every feather, that we'll be able to praise you and worship you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Be with us on Wednesday night.